acute back pain, it's probably one of the most common things a primary care doctor treats. And I'm a spine surgeon, so of course I treat it too. Yesterday I presented the case of a 65 year old man who presented to my office with acute back pain. It happened all of a sudden after lifting something heavy. He felt a knife-like pain into his lower back. Now, what could possibly cause this? Acute lower back pain is pain that begins all of a sudden, and there can be many reasons or explanations for acute pain. It can be from osteoarthritis, it can be from disc herniations, even spinal fractures, spinal stenosis, muscle strains or sprains. Our patient had a baseline CAT scan that was done many years ago after he was in a car accident and it demonstrated a pretty normal looking back. But after this episode, his back CT looked like this. What is that? That most likely is what's called a Schmorl's node. A Schmorl's what? It's a disc herniation into the bone itself. They're really commonly seen on imaging. So let's talk about what exactly they are. Now the anatomy of the spine is that you have the vertebral bones and the disc, which is the cartilage material that sits in between the bones in our spine and is the shock absorber of the spine. Anytime we bend, twist, lean forward, the disc moves with us. In most cases, the bone is more resilient than the disc. So if you lift something too heavy, you lean over too far while lifting, the disc can tear and the material of the disc can actually herniate out of the space contained within the disc itself. And that's called a disc herniation. In some cases, the disc is actually stronger than the bone and it can herniate into the bone. And that's called a Schmorl's node. Here you can see an illustration in which the disc actually herniates into the bone itself. Most Schmorl's nodes are really asymptomatic, meaning we don't really know when they happen and they're incidentally found on imaging. Here's a picture of a patient that had many Schmorl's node within their spine and have no symptoms. Here's an MRI finding of the same. Here's another MRI finding of an acute Schmorl's node where we can actually see edema within the bone. That means that this just happened and is likely a source of acute pain. That's what we see on this patient's CT scan is where the disc itself has bubbled into the end plate of the bone above and below the disc. An MRI may help us determine acuity in this case to see whether or not there's swelling in the bone or edema, and that may tell us whether or not this Smorls node actually just happened. If the Smorls node is acute or not acute, usually the treatment is the same. We treat most acute back pain conservatively, meaning we don't jump to surgery. Don't get me wrong, there are certain conditions that are neurosurgical emergencies that can cause acute pain and need urgent surgical attention, such as cauda equina syndrome. That's when you lose your bowel or bladder function. But as I mentioned in his case, he had no symptoms other than acute pain and no symptoms into his legs. So how do we treat this problem? We treat a Smorl's node just like any other disc injury. Anti-inflammatory medications such as Motrin can help reduce the inflammation within the bone, as well as steroid medications. Heat and ice may also be utilized to help control the pain. Referral to a physical therapist is often recommended to help with stretching that may help reduce the pain and activity modification. Many Smorl's nodes sequentially in the thoracic vertebrae in young men may signify the development of what's called Shorman's kyphosis. It's a little different than what I'm talking about here, and I have explained that in another video on that disease process. To summarize, Smorl's nodes are disc herniations into the bone. They're often found incidentally on imaging, but they can be a source of acute pain. They're super common, and the good news is almost always they can be treated successfully by conservative treatment, such as physical therapy, anti-inflammatory medications, and rest. If the symptoms become chronic or last a really long time and don't resolve with conservative treatment, surgery may be entertained rarely, and that would consist of removing the entire disc and performing a spinal fusion. Like I said, fortunately, that's needed very rarely, but that is where we would remove the entire disc and place bone graft within the disc followed by screws and rods to stabilize that segment of the spine so it doesn't move anymore. And by not moving, it would resolve the pain. You would only want to do that if you were really confident that that was the source of the patient's pain. Luckily, in our patient's case, he responded very well to conservative treatment. 
He did six weeks of physical therapy as well as anti-inflammatory medications and his pain almost completely resolved. Even though I really enjoy performing spine surgery, I find it even more rewarding when we can successfully manage a patient's pain without surgery. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.